I was feeling so disconnected from the world and, and, and everything. And so it was a way for me to go out and actually connect with the world again. And I've, because of how therapeutic it was and how powerful it was for me, uh, some of, something I didn't expect it to be when I first picked up the camera, but it has become that way. And I continue to use it in that sense now as a means for exploring myself, the world, as therapy. Welcome to this week's episode of the Photographic Connections podcast. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections, and it brings me great pleasure to welcome Matthew Whelan onto the podcast this week. Now, I first became aware of Matt back at the end of last year when I heard him being interviewed for another podcast. And I was so taken by his story that I immediately reached out to him and asked if he'd come on this podcast, to which he said yes, which I was so delighted about because Matt's story is so very thought provoking and I really wanted to speak to him about it further. He's been through his fair share of grief in life, which has led him to have a very deep interest in the work of the human mind and he's gone on to study and have interest in science and psychiatry as a result. But Matt also has a very creative side to him and he uses both photography and poetry as a form of therapy to help him deal with his own emotional struggles. As I say, I find Matt's story very thought-provoking. It's really made me ponder my own photography journey in many different ways, and I'm sure by the end of this episode, you'll begin to think more deeply about your own journey too. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Matthew Whelan. Hi Matt, thank you so much for coming on the podcast this week. Hi, Kim. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you because I came across you a couple of weeks ago when you spoke with um, Clipcast, which for those listening, it's basically like a, a YouTube podcast style platform where a group of photographers in Scotland get together and interview different other Scottish photographers. And one of our community members, Brian, is on the panel and he very kindly linked to to your discussion. And upon listening to your story, it resonated with me so deeply and it brought up a lot of things for me, actually, which I think we'll we'll delve into a little bit later on. But before we, we do all of that, what I like to do in the beginning is to invite you to go back to the beginning of your photography journey and share the story of what got you into photography in the first place? Yeah, um, sure. So I think photography has always been something that has been in my life. I, um, so I, I, I remember, I have memories from way back when I was a child of using those small disposable film cameras. And it was usually when we would go on holiday as a family and um, my mum would buy each of me and my siblings a small disposable film camera that would, we would take with us on our holiday and use them to document the holiday. Um, and so I never really, you know, I never studied formally photography. It was always just there. It's something I almost took for granted. Um, and then, you know, as I grew older, phones started to include cameras on them and so it was just a continuation of using the camera on the phone to document holidays, everyday life, everyday events. And so in that sense it was just something I, I never really thought about. Like the camera was always there, it was always something I could use to document whatever I was experiencing in life. But around two years ago, um, I was on holiday with a, a group of friends in the Canary Islands and one of my friends is a, has been a keen photographer for many years um, and I saw him use his camera, he had like a, a really nice DSLR camera set up and something I'd never really been, been exposed to before. But I saw him taking photographs and then when we returned to the Airbnb I saw him editing the photographs and I was immensely curious about the whole process and so I got chatting with him and, I, and he was telling me about his love for photography and how he uses it to express himself 
and it was something I never considered. Like it almost confused me. I was I was thinking, how could photography be a, a mechanism, a means through which to express yourself? You know, for me, it was just always something I just used to capture pictures that I store on a computer and look back on years later and be like, oh, that's a good memory. But it was nothing more than that. And so it sparked my interest in photography uh, as something deeper, as something that, that, as I say, could be used to not only express yourself, but to also understand yourself and understand the world as well. Now, at the time, so this was just under two years ago, but in the wake of that period, so me and my friends were all studying PhDs in in um, AI, so we have that in common. But I was going through an immensely difficult period, um, not just in my research, but also personally, because a couple of months before that, I'd lost a, a, a very close lifelong friend to suicide. And so mentally I was quite lost and I was unsure of what I wanted to do with my life. It was, I, I, I almost quit my PhD at this point because when something like that happens, it just kind of throws everything up in the air and you're like, you know, what, what am I, what is my real purpose, you know? Is, there's a, there was a sense of shouldn't I have been there for, for my friend rather than working so hard on my academic career and photography also therefore became like I, when I picked it up when I picked up photography I picked up photographing I was I didn't realize it at the time but I was using it to explore my own experiences and how I was feeling. And I, I, I began doing things like self-portraiture, which I was inspired by Sean Tucker with that, um, as, a, as a means to kind of look at myself and see, because I had so many negative thoughts about myself at the time. Thoughts like, I'm, you know, I must be a terrible friend. I didn't do enough. Um, all of these sorts of spiraling negativity. And so I, I guess the, the camera allowed me to see myself in a, in a different perspective rather than the internal. It's hard to explain, but, you know, there's an internal perception of myself that I had. And in a sense, by looking at myself from an objective point of view, and I could see my own my own external expression of feelings as well and i almost built a sense of sympathy and empathy for myself by doing that and it was extremely powerful um, but not just self-portraiture i was also doing a lot of street photography as well so i i'm studying in edinburgh and so i was living in edinburgh and i would go out onto the streets of edinburgh and 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 do street photography and that was a way for me to explore other people and to understand in a sense society and, and and also to connect with other people because I was feeling so disconnected from the world and 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 everything and so it was a way for me to go out and actually connect with the world again and I've because of how therapeutic it was and how powerful it was for me, uh, some of, something I didn't expect it to be when I first picked up the camera, but it has become that way. And I continue to use it in that sense now mm. as a means for exploring myself, the world, as therapy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I just think it's amazing that a simple thing like going on holiday with a friend and watching him and his expression to photography has now given you a way of understanding the world, understanding yourself and, and this self-expression and this deep dive into your life that you, I guess, never had that outlet for before. And I mean, that's what really caught me when I was listening to your story on, on ClickCast. There's so much, I think, 
I say this a lot when I'm speaking to people, but I, I see a lot of myself and others because I think, you know, we all do, don't we? We all go through very similar things in life, but of course have very um, different experiences at the same time. But there was a lot mm -hmm. about how you've used photography to discover yourself again, to discover the world again, and how profound that's been on your just your ability to get through the tough times. It's almost like photography has been really life changing for you, hasn't it? It absolutely has, and in a in a sense, so losing my friend, I've I've lost family to mental illness as well, and at that time, it was through science. I went into the field of science, so. This was around eight years ago, um, and just at the end of my undergraduate degree, I was studying engineering and robotics, and I decided to move. At the time when I lost my, my family, that triggered me to move into the area of AI and neuroscience and psychiatry, which is what I research now. And so I felt it was almost like if if I can study and research this field, I would be able to perhaps come to some understanding of what drove my my family members to to, to take their lives. Um, and also, I was hoping to understand myself because I didn't want to. I, I, did, I didn't want to, I, and I didn't want anyone else to end up in that situation either. So it was through science I felt that I could find some understanding. But then losing my friend, it was like, wow, I've just spent, you know, at that time, six years, I've spent these last five or six years working so hard in the area of science. And still, it feels like, <laughs> things are not have, uh, it was almost like I was asking myself you know what have you learned what have you things are still going wrong what have what have you learned so I needed something else and that's I think where photography has been so important um, and it was a case of me needing something else because all I had at the time was m my scientific career mm. but you know, science is is, a, is an incredibly powerful system for understanding the world, but it's limited in many ways. Um, it is it's very limited in terms of understanding concepts, subjective experiences that can't really be expressed in symbolic terms. You know, in mathematical theorems and even in in words. Whereas art, like through visual arts or through sound, music, or other other areas of the arts, you can express, I think, subjective experiences that allow other people to feel them and connect through that. And I never considered that that's what art could be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, that's what I discovered when I when I began doing photography. Um, so in that sense, it has, has made a, yeah, it's transformed my life really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. Like, I love how you speak about art there and that kind of been able to, to articulate and express that subjective side of nature. Cause I think, you know, science is incredible, as you rightly say, it helps us understand so much about the world, but it's almost like it lacks emotion. And I think, especially when you've been through things in your life you know, it brings up so much emotion and feelings for us that need a way of being released and processed. And I find creative things, whether it is photography, drawing, painting, poetry, even dance, cooking, gardening, you know, it's all creative in its own its own right. You know, it's about finding that mm -hmm. outlet that we can physically move. And, you know, photography, we're physically out there walking around, moving. We're visually seeing things. We're then creating these images. And I know in, in the photographs you create that you play around quite a lot with different settings in your camera, doing things like long exposures and having parts of your images out of focus as well, because 
you're not trying to to photograph what's in front of you. You're trying to internalize things, I guess, and make sense of them by using the creative side of photography to to show the world, I guess, what you're feeling inside, but also what you're seeing. And then sometimes you create images as well, don't you? And then you go home and you connect them with emotions and experiences that you've had in your life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do take, I do experiment a lot with the camera and I do bring some of my scientific discipline into it in the, in the sense of just wanting to experiment and test all the possible various combinations of settings and locations and see what I can get out of it. And sometimes I will have an intention. So I've had days where I wanted to express a particular mood and I had images in mind. So for instance, I wanted to express the feeling of of shock and 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 confusion at, at, at receiving the news of like a, a, a death, and I knew okay if I want to express this feeling, perhaps I can use motion blur, and I can edit the images in a way that just is very unnatural. It's very disconcerting. It's quite jarring to look at the images, and so I will go out and shoot images with that in mind but there are other days where I have no real mood that I want to express it's just a case of let me just go out and see what I can photograph and just I just I you know I, I, I remain as open as I possibly can be and just let whatever I feel at the time in the moment dictate what I photograph and it's only in re in uh, retrospect where I will look back at the photographs and then apply some meaning to them and some emotion or, or, or relate it to some events that I've experienced in the past. Um, and so that's another, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if the second method, how true that is, whether what I impose on the images that I take is really what I was unconsciously trying to express when I took the image. I'm not entirely sure if that's true, but just the process of being able to use the photographs to explore my own experiences in itself is very, very powerful, I think. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And there's like the two sides to that coin, isn't there? There's the going out and expressing certain things, but then the coming back and looking through your images and then deciding which ones speak to you and, you know, what are they saying? Why are they speaking to you? And then you often combine that with poetry as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. I think poetry is also a fantastic way to explore yourself and to understand other other people who have explored themselves through through poetry as well. And I actually had this idea where because as I was researching for a few years um perception and how we perceive the world and I was working on a theorem that um it's built on a famous Scottish uh, mathematician called Thomas Bayes actually so the theorem is called Bayes theorem. And the idea is that the way we perceive the world is through the combination of the sensory experiences that we receive. So everything that we, you know, we, we see and hear and, and touch and taste, etc. And a prior model, a, a kind of understanding of what we expect the world to be like that's kind of built into our, our, our brain in some sense. And when you combine these two, that's how we perceive the world. And so I had this idea of relating that theorem to my art. And I was considering the fact that perhaps photography for me is a way to change the sensory experiences that I receive in life. So I, I can go into different environments. I've, I travel to various different places just for the sake of photographing. And so I'm really changing what I'm experiencing sensorily there. But then poetry is a way for me to explore kind of the inner model, my 
internal world and perhaps to alter it in some way to change how I feel about events, people, um, that sort of thing. And so I wanted, I wanted therefore to bring these two together. I wanted to bring the photography, which explores the external world with my poetry, which explores my internal world. And by combining them together, I can kind of control and change how I perceive the world. And so that's where the two came. I've always written for most of my life. I enjoy writing. And it was only when I picked up photography a couple of years ago that I found this space of being able to combine the two. Um, yeah, and I like the process. I enjoy the process of looking back at images and seeing what words kind of um, um, emerge from 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 the images that I look at, you know, because they the images give you feelings, and they in a, in in and of themselves they are events that you can write about. And poetry is all about writing about particular feelings or emotions or experiences. And so, in a sense, it's it's quite easy to use an image to then write a poem because mm. you've got the event there in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I really love when I'm listening to you speaking is the balance that you have. You know, you speak there about the internal and the world and the out external world and how you're combining that with photography and art. And you also speak, you know, about your interest and in studies in science and now combining that with, with photography, you know, creativity and art. It's like there's a real balance there with you and it's almost like you're combining your left and right side of your brain to really <laughs> deeply articulate and understand the world around us it seems like it's something that's you know it's really important to you to be able to to try and understand the world and why things are happening but also to be able to do it in a very balanced manner and it's um it's very authentic authentic in many ways and just allows all these different avenues to be explored and, and come together to bring a complete picture, which I guess, you know, not a pun there intended, but it's, um, do you know, you're just bringing all this together in the photography and in your expression. And I just think it's a really beautiful way because you're not just, it's not that you're just focusing on one thing, but it's like you've brought all of your interests together to create artistic work that that is so true to you, you know, and it's, it's but equally it it, um, it inspires and allows people that, that view what you create to feel something because there's a, a relatability about it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Um, I've never, I often don't feel balanced in my life, I have to say. And I guess it comes from I guess it comes from often me going down a particular route because I can become quite obsessed with certain things. Anything I undertake, I can become quite obsessed with. And I will go down that route for a long time. But I usually reach a point where, where I've found my limit and I go, OK, there's not much more value that I can get from this and then that's when I stop and then I look back and I'm like okay let me let me see let me see how all of the skills and everything that I've learned from what I've been doing have contributed to my life and but also what gaps has it left what areas have I not explored and then I'll go and try and fill those in and explore something else and so I've always I used to frustrate my my parents because I would when I was younger I would always be asking for new things like a new musical instrument or a new piece of equipment or I wanted to take classes in all the different sports and you know I, I just wanted to do everything um and eventually I find things that I become really obsessed about and I will try and uh, I'm not I'm not like amazing at anything, but I try and get as good as I possibly can be at something. But then I'll exhaust my abilities in that area um, and, and then move on to something else. And I think we are, because we are, each of us are 
a whole person and we all have such complex uh, life experiences and skill sets and I think we should if we want to kind of live fully the person we are we should try and combine everything that we have gone through in life um, and express express that I think um, yeah 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 I think I like to believe that everything we've gone through in life has been I guess to teach us things but also to give us the strength to then go out there and and share these things so that other people that are going through similar things you know it's it's almost like I just feel like we're here to almost learn to overcome to understand the world to I don't really know what I'm trying to say but it's almost like there's a real, I think, need for people to have that exploration. And it's not something that everybody feels able to do. But I think when we can do it, it can lead us down some really interesting paths and discovery. And it also, like I say, gives us that strength to then help other people. And, you know, with what you're doing now, your interest in psychiatry and also, um, you know, with you posting your poems and your photographs online, it's like that is positively reaching people and helping them through similar things in in many respects but also they've got their own personal experience that they can tie to it and take what they wish from it which I think is one of the most beautiful things about art you know mm. when you have pieces of artwork that have been genuinely created from a a raw place rather than simply photographing or painting or writing what we feel we should it's like you're speaking from the heart and it really really connects with people and yeah. it's also like when you then listen to you speak it's it's just very clear that you you're just able to bring all this together in a really beautiful fashion and that meaning I think is what really spoke to me about about what you do is is the meaning behind it all you might not articulate it or feel it in the moment but when everything comes together there's great meaning and depth in that and it's not something that a lot of people really struggle to do that um, so I almost wonder, like, this is probably a very difficult question to think about or, or answer, but, you know, I think we kind of go around two paths in life. So, like some people can go through a lot and they just kind of get very stuck in, in where they are. And, you know, that's not a judgment. It's just, you know, they don't know how to overcome things or how to work through things. And then there's other people who they go through really difficult times and they feel all of that emotion and somehow they're able to to evaluate it and go on to to do similar things to what you're doing now and I almost wonder like what do you think gave you the strength to try and understand what you've been through rather than letting it consume you and of course at the time it would have done you know you were grieving and everything but what do you think you've been able to do in being able to to work through that and, and get to a place now where you're trying to understand things and articulate them and, and move through what you've been through. Hmm. Yeah. So I, th I think for me, it's probably having a sense of curiosity always and being curious i don't think that i would i wouldn't call myself let's say optimistic or pessimistic and i often feel a lot of negative feelings so i still feel them but i am an immensely curious person and even before I, I've lost, you know, family and my friend, I was, I, I consider myself a very spiritual person. So I've, I practiced things like mindfulness meditation. I grew up in a very religious family, um, but I kind of left, I left the religion that I, I, I grew up in as an adolescent, but I still internally am, feel very spiritual. Um, and have a sense of, I think, awe about life and why we, you know, I always ask the questions, why are we, why am I here? Why are we here? 
do we have a purpose um and i don't think there are i don't think there is an answer to those questions and i like the fact that there isn't an answer because it means there's always something to learn there's always a reason to keep on attempting to understand our life experiences regardless of how negative they they are and i think that's it is that sense of needing to understand or not necessarily needing but if if i ever feel like life is too much and i just can't emotionally cope with what i'm experiencing i'm able to somehow bring some curiosity to that and 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 take take an objective view of myself and just explore those feelings and the thoughts and of i think as humans we can get caught up in our imagination a bit not imagination but we can get caught up in our thoughts too much in in the sense that if you're experiencing post traumatic stress disorder for instance you will literally experience the traumatic event even though the traumatic event event is no longer occurring and so if if you looked at yourself objectively you could see that you're not actually experiencing the trauma that a part of your brain thinks is thinks is happening and so being able to i think have that, have a sense of mindfulness and curiosity about that experience and i would ask myself why am i why am i so um anxious or why am i so overwhelmed with grief right now you know i would ask myself those things and i and then i would i i, I guess i would then take take that objectivity take that view of my experience and put that into my photography and my poetry and or just write you know i i i i keep a a, a journal i I've, i've been writing in a journal for for many years and i think that also helps me to understand my experiences and the 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 power of that actually is that if i'm going through something that is incredibly hard to deal with i will write it down i will write down how i feel i, I you know I, i have some really things that i look back on and read and just still you know it, it it's hard to read because it, it was so i was feeling so, so down and at the time but i can read another entry sometime later and it's a fantastic experience and i've be, you know i was maybe on a holiday with friends or or having a great time with a partner or something like this and so uh, you 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 have the ability to to compare and contrast your life experiences by by um by keeping a a, a, a diary by keeping keeping a documentary of your life and that helps bring perspective So I think also that is yeah that is a huge a huge help to me mm. to bring perspective in that sense. Yeah. It's very clear that writing is very important to you in in your process not just with articulating your photography but of course with with everything you've just explained there with understanding your life and stepping back and looking at things objectively and you know it's really interesting because of course I've like I've done photography for many years now almost 15 years and I've always struggled to call myself a photographer because while I I clearly am a photographer and I use photography to articulate the world it's like for me there's always been this deeper sense of what photography does and it's not necessarily the imagery it's like how I feel when I'm out there the experience I'm having the emotions I'm having what it's doing for me in that moment how it's making me feel and I've realized you know that mm. I can't always articulate that in simply a photograph 
which I guess is one reason why I started uh, filming YouTube videos. I've had a YouTube channel now for five years because then I'm putting the visual together with me vlogging or speaking or doing voiceover about what I'm seeing and sensing and experiencing. But a lot more recently, I've got much more into writing. And during the pandemic, I started writing little bits of poetry and I've kind of not really done it again since. But I'm now writing a lot and I have these these ideas of making books and doing things based on this podcast. And it's like, I find photography on its own is beautiful, but I find when you can combine it with something else, whether it's writing, video, speech, um, there's some incredible photographers out there now that are painting and they're like overlaying paintings onto photographs and combining mm. all of this media it's yeah. almost like it, it gives us that complete story and it allows us to bring all these stories and articulations together into one creative expression. And But I do think there's something about writing because, you know, they say, don't they, when you write, it's like you're taking your thoughts out and mm. physically putting them onto paper. And it has to be done physically, doesn't it? It's almost like typing. It's yeah. not quite the same, yeah. um, but it's so powerful and that combination, I think, just listening to you as well and how you use it to help you through the struggles in life, it's um it is it is powerful. And that curiosity, I think, is is so it's a great way, I think, to view life. You know, what what am I going through? How am I feeling? What am I sensing? What is this bringing up for me? What does this photograph make me feel? And then we can objectively look at that and th- and try and overcome it, which um yeah, there's just a lot of wisdom in what you've just shared there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's so nice to hear that you you picked up some poetry as well and that you've started writing. And can I ask what 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 it was that drew you into 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 the like into into writing poetry and writing? Was there anything specific that? Well, it's really weird because when I look back at school. Um, When I was in secondary school, English was one of my strongest subjects. And I actually found a card that my English teacher had written to me before I left school, um, you know, kind of telling Mm -hmm. me to keep writing and all this kind of stuff. And I'd forgotten about it. And I think it was refinding that during the pandemic that got me to start writing again. And, you know, through YouTube, I've spoken so much and I suddenly started writing little poems or little voiceover bits that I wanted to articulate because I just felt... There was something about it, something about that physical writing. And I think also in my own uh, mental health journey as well, I'd read in many books the power of journaling and the power of putting our our thoughts onto paper and trying to articulate what we're going through. And I just slowly started doing it. And it's just become more of a a process now and something that I'd love to actually turn into books, you know, like tell my life story, tell the story of this podcast, all that kind of stuff. Because I I always say everybody's got a story in them. And that was one of the reasons why I started this podcast to tell people's stories. Mm -hmm. But I love reading and I kind of think it'd be great to whatever we love. It's almost like you taking all of your things together. It's like if we love something, can we produce that ourselves, you know, because it's it speaks mm. to us. You know, you love reading. Let's write a book or. Yeah. So that's kind of. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. No, no it does entirely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it is hard to explain why I, I find it hard to explain why I write, write poetry. But I it does. There's a there's a there's a there's value in externalizing your internal thoughts but also it help i i find that it helps you order your own thoughts as well so as you say if you physically write you can't write as fast as you can think and so you have to be very selective and also when you're writing you have to write in a sense in a, in a way that makes sense it has to be coherent but if you analyze your own thoughts you'll see that it can be very incoherent and it can jump all over the place it doesn't really make a lot of sense you know i don't know if you've done something like a stream of consciousness where you would just write whatever comes to mind and often it doesn't make much sense at all and so when you're writing you have to really order and structure your thoughts and so it it can be like a feedback mechanism where in order to write better you have to order your thoughts 
better. Um, and, and, and when you're ordering your thoughts, uh, uh, when you have more ordered thoughts, you're able to make better writing. And yeah, better writing helps your audience, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And I also think, like, when you look at your poems and how you write and how you combine it with your photography, it, I kind of, when I was listening to the, you speak on the ClickCast discussion the other week, I was, um, there was something when I was looking at your images and then listening to the poetry that you were creating and then you were speaking about some of your photographs. And I really thought, I started looking at myself more deeply. Um, and I know this is something that that was kind of reflected back during that discussion as well. It's it's um there was something in what you you are creating that was bringing stuff up for me, but in a very good way. But I was starting to look at my life and how I approach photography and starting to think there's always been meaning in my images, but there's actually so much depth that I'm still missing. And it's almost like I feel inspired now to to go out there and really delve further into that and then combining it, you know, with some form of writing or speaking and articulation. I think it's almost like these layers, isn't it? It's like we discover one part of ourselves and then we realise mm. there's a hidden part of ourselves that we still haven't expressed or shown. And mm. I think that's the beauty. It kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier as well. It's like in life, I don't think there's such a thing as being healed or such a thing as, as getting to the end because, you know, it's like that onion analogy a lot of people speak about in the psychology world and in therapy mm. and stuff. You know, it's like you peel back one layer and there's another layer and another layer. I think that's one of the beautiful things about creative expression is it's never ending. You know, you 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 discover one thing about yourself and then you discover something else. And um, I know through my own journey, like combining therapy and all that kind of stuff with with my own work and my journey, it's almost like it's those layers are getting peeled away. But then a new part of me is formed and a new part of me is formed. And I know something that's really important to you and your expression is that you are true and authentic and you're you're sharing you know, how you deeply feel and I guess being vulnerable with the world. And that's very important to you because you want to be real. Um, and I find some people, of course, really struggle with that. It takes a lot of courage. Um, but when we do, it's it's so inspiring. And I think what you do is, is a good representation of, of that and the power of just being true and genuine and curious and peeling back those layers and then sharing it, the power of sharing. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's powerful, isn't it? To share our story with the world. It is hugely powerful and it helps us as we understand ourselves and connects with other people through that. And it helps other people who can discover parts of themselves in, in, in you and also connects with you as well. So I feel that sharing is a huge part of any creative yeah process and endeavor like creating when i when I went into photography, I've never been a huge social media fan, and I only opened my Instagram accounts when I started doing my photography, and I just went into it completely open minded and um i I was like well, I don't really care how people receive or respond to what I'm going to create. I'm just going to create for the sake of creating and connect with other creators and photographers and learn from them. And immediately I found out that the world of photography, the community, the photography community is, is so welcoming and friendly. And I had loads of advice from people amazing photographers and I would just be like hey I love this photograph I love what you did here I wish I could do the same could you tell me a bit more about how you did this and that's how I started to learn about different camera settings and or long exposure and intentional camera movement everything I just asked people um, but that could only come about if they were sharing their work um, and so I, I think in that sense, it yeah, sharing is so important for helping us to connect. It's not a case for me. It's, and I don't think it should be a case of sharing just because you want attention and you want people to follow you. I, I don't see any value in that. 
for me, it's a case of building genuine connections with people. And I think that's maybe that's where you can discover the difference between people who are creating just for the sake of gaining attention. Usually it's more inauthentic because they're having to express something that is not genuine just so they can get, get that attention and get that following versus the people who are genuinely wanting to connect and share to connect mm. and are being authentic in that. And I, th I, I usually think, if not immediately, at some point you do discover the difference between those two types of individuals. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it's really interesting because, again, I've been off the back of your discussion. I think it was just something about, you know, listening to you speak before, um, you know, I've really been evaluating, you know, my journey. Like when I got into photography and started sharing things online, I had no expectations. It was just a case of I'm going to put these videos up, share these images. If people like them, they like them. But then mm. I've noticed in my own journey that there was a period of time where I got hooked into that. And it wasn't like the subscribers and the likes and that never really meant anything to me. But there was this need for momentum and this pressure to keep creating. And then I did go through a period of it was partly due to where I was living, but I wasn't quite inspired by where I was staying. But yeah, I was pushing myself to create because I wanted because of the, my business was starting. And it's almost like you, you need to do something to keep that going. And it's only yeah. been since moving back to where I was brought up in May and starting to connect with the places that really speak to me again and explore other forms of creativity and start this podcast that I've let go of all of that again. You know, like if I look at my work, you know, my YouTube channel was and sort of still is getting a lot more views and this podcast gets listens. But it's this podcast that I really enjoy doing right now. And I really don't care how many listens it gets. It's just the fact that the people that are listening are are gaining a lot of inspiration and value from it. And that's where I'm going. I'm going now back to my true essence, I guess, of where I began and the thing that's always been my biggest wound is I've always wanted genuine human connection. And I'm like, how can you find that if you're not being that genuine human yourself? And it's about me working mm -hmm. through my own layers in my personal life, but also my creativity to try and get to the stage where I am being, you know, and that authenticity has always been in my work, but it's just like there's been places where I've lost it. And now it's like, I just want to be genuine and true and real but we, we go up and down, don't we, because of, of fears. For me, I think it was mostly fear more than anything. And now it's just like letting go of that fear and just being like, do you know what? I'm human. I've been through a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I've probably done yeah. things that I regret for whatever reason. But if I can then learn from those experiences and sh create art out of it and share it with the world, then that genuine connection starts happening. And, you know, a lot of people say if you could just help one person in life, then... That's beautiful. And I think that's, you know, I get the sense yeah. that's where you're wanting to go or, you know, maybe not where you're wanting to go, but that's what's very important to you in, in your expression. And um, particularly because of your experiences mm. and that as well. It's um, a very nice way to go. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you for, for sharing your journey, Kim. I, yeah, it's so interesting to, to hear. And I think it is very natural to fall into that need for validation at some point. I think we all want to feel validated and to feel heard and to feel that we are a part of the world and that we do connect with others. But if we force it too much and we, we don't stay true to ourselves and we're not authentic, then I think we can often feel even more alone, even if we're connecting with more people because the connections that we build if we're being inauthentic if we're just doing it for validation if we're just doing something so that we can get praise from people the connections that we build are, are going to be very superficial and they're going to people you i think you will feel that you're not connecting with anybody because the people because you're not expressing who you are. You're not being your, yourself. Um, and yeah, so you can feel even more alone in that. And so it is better. I, I always felt as well that I would much rather have a very small 
number of people who I genuinely connect with than a large number of people that I don't really connect with at all. And I guess, I guess that I'm a, I'm a very natural introvert and I guess that that is a, perhaps a consequence of being an introvert as well is just I, I feel safer and more, more, more connected with a small number of people who I strongly resonate with. But I also, because I don't know what it's like to have a business out of being a creative and doing creative work. So I guess I, also, I have a freedom in my, in my artistic work because I, I have my job. I, I work in as a researcher and that keeps me financially stable. And so in my artistic practice, I feel a, a total sense of freedom, I guess. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't require subscribers and followers um, and advertisers to make money. Mm. So, I, you know, I, I, I guess that, that would be hard if I was, yeah, for people that are making a business out of it. I can understand how it would be very tempting just to fall into the trap of, delivering content for the sake of the for the sake of the numbers and the metrics it's interesting because I've, I've got to a stage in the last few months where I don't really want to be posting that much online anymore I want to become much more I don't know if insular is the right word but I want to be more within my own world so that I have more energy to put towards my creations and to actually be able to create you know much more meaningful pieces of art which I think you know require more time and consideration but I actually like my my dream and this is this is this is happening now but my my dream is to help people personally help people with their photography which then puts that that space between my artistic expression which you know I don't need to fear about making money on because that's not you know the business really it's my free artistic expression um but you know the the business side comes from helping people through workshops and mentoring and um you know so that's and that's what, what I've always wanted to do is to really support people in life support them through the ups and downs and to mentor them and and guide them and you know give them experiences but then like I have that very much that then different compartment where my creations there's no pressure for money it's just like I can make a book one day and you know if it sells it sells if it doesn't it doesn't I've just got a nice book with all my my stuff in it and that sort of stuff so but it's about getting to that stage of being true and being like do you know what actually what do I really want to do with the world I want to create so it be true in my creations but I also want to help people so it's like yeah it's it's, it's been a big process but it's um a bit like our, our mental health journey. It's, it's a never ending process of adapting and evolving. But um, the, the closer we can get to who we want to be, I think, I think the better, which is, um, yeah, an exciting journey to take. Very exciting. And I think one thing we I'd love to finish on, Matt, um, you know, you'd mentioned at the beginning about your involvement and interest in AI. Um, and of course, some people don't know anything about AI. Some people know a lot about AI, but um I think one of the fears in the creative world is is taking away the ex the creative expression of people and what's that going to do for AI. So I just thought if anyone was uh, interested and heard you mentioning it earlier, it might be quite nice to end just with, you know, where do you see in the future how AI is going to play in and maybe complement or help or even hinder our creativity? You know, where do you see things going with that? Yeah, it's a big question. Um, I would say AI is very much a tool and I use AI as a tool to help me do things that would otherwise take me a long time to do. So in photography, many of us who, particularly doing digital photography, will use sky detection, subject detection, those sorts of tools in Lightroom and I don't think any of us have a problem with doing that. We know that we, if we didn't have those tools, we, we could use a mask and brush over those areas, but it would be tedious. It would take a long time to do. So given those tools, it can help speed up our workflow. And I sense that 
that is how AI should be used. So it can enhance, I think it can enhance and speed up your creativity. It can do things that would otherwise take you a long time to do previously. I, and I think we should always be, of course, honest in what we create. So people who are using image generators and just typing in some keywords, I don't think the person typing in the keywords is an artist. They're not necessarily like, the, the, if you consider what it took to make that image, it took thousands and thousands of, of, of images from other artists as input data. It took thousands of scientific research from the, from the AI scientists to develop the models. And one person comes and spends 10 seconds typing in some keywords to get an output image. Like their input to the output is so minimal and tiny. It, it, it's inconsequential. It shouldn't count as their work. But if you're creating and you have you have a vision in mind and you can see that AI could be used to, to, to help enhance your vision and speed up some of, yeah, some of the tasks. I can't see that being a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's very obvious because I think you, you have like creating this, Podcast Kim, for instance, is such a beautiful example of how art is more than just the end product. It's really the story that is behind the end product that matters. And I think that's what we all connect on. And so if let's say someone is creating just they're just generating images from an image generator. There's no real story behind those images behind the person creating the images. And perhaps in a world that will be more and more dominated by, by AI technology, perhaps it will drive us more to connect in this sort of way. So the, the art might connect us initially, but then we take that further and we start telling each other our stories and we connect over those stories. And if you go into that realm, it becomes very obvious. If if all of my if all of my work was just generated through AI, what it would be obvious to you when we sit and speak like this, right? Um, but if you use AI as a tool just to create artwork, and then you can explain everything that went into the artwork and the stories behind it and the feelings that you were expressing. I don't see that being a problem. I mean, again, like AI is just a technology. I think many photographers will know that when photography was introduced as a technology, lots of traditional artists who painters and, and people like that complained and photography wasn't really seen, seen as an art form, but now we think of it very differently and we do see it as an art form and we see that it can be a powerful technology to express events and feelings and emotions and I think AI will just be an extension of that mm. I think part of it's a fear isn't it people don't know what it's going to do and where it's going to lead but I think I think in everything in life we have to use discernment and be like do you know what do I want to engage and use this or don't I and if we do you know it's about being honest I think especially if you're claiming to be creating images and you're not you know it's about that honesty but as you rightly say there, you know, AI will never be able to create the stories that we do and it'll never be able to have that human connection and that emotion. And it's, you know, it's in storytelling that us humans go back to the beginning of our time. You know, it was sitting around the campfire sharing stories and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, you know, I think YouTube and podcasts are the modern day way of that. You know, us humans connect with stories and, you know, AI can help us so much with with a lot of things in the background of our creations, as you rightly said, but the actual final product has to kind of come from a human to have that element and that connection. So, yeah, it's about, um, yeah, using our discernment and just being true to ourselves, isn't it? So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, brilliant, Matt. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today. I find your outlook on life very fascinating and there's a lot of wise words in it. So I very much appreciate your time today. And if anyone would like to connect with you further, where can they where can they go to find you? Probably the best place is my Instagram. Um, so my name is Matthew Tutis T. Whelan, W-H-E-L-A-N, all one word. I do have a website um tales of perception.com sounds a bit of a silly name but it's it, i gave that to my like kind of general project of my artwork so there those are the, probably the two best places brilliant fantastic and i'll put a link to them in the show notes below so yeah thank you again matt thank you kim it's been so lovely to speak to you thank you Wow, that was pretty thought-provoking. I really enjoyed speaking with Matt. And as I said at the beginning, I just find his story and speaking with him so incredibly thought-provoking. So I hope you got a lot out of listening to us talk, as I did both through listening to Matt's first podcast and speaking to him for this one. Now I have some exciting news. I have just launched a new online course. It's a week immersive course where I'm going to bring 10 people together via Zoom to teach them learning to see. Now it's become very clear to me that as photographers many of us go out and look and photograph what we are visualising when we're out there. But when we really learn how to see the world, to feel into our emotions and to connect on a much deeper level, it brings so much more meaning and reward to our photography. So with this in mind, I've designed this one week immersive photography course. The first week has already sold out, but I've just launched a second week for April. So if you'd like to join me on this week long immersive group photography course, you can find all the details at photographicconnections.com. I'm also about to release more dates for Immersive Photography Weekends in Scotland this year and I'm also going to be taking on a few people to mentor one-to-one this spring. So if any of that interests you or you'd like to of course get involved with our online community, as I say you can find all the details at photographicconnections.com and you can also sign up to our newsletter there if you'd like to be the first to find out of any upcoming events. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover. Mm -hmm.